Alright mates, welcome back to Scotland. Today we will be trying to find the best bottle of scotch. Oops, wrong channel. Hello, welcome back to Transport Explained. Today we will find out whether the th Class 385 is just more Hitachi garbage or an actually decent train. Which it probably isn't, but let's find out. A few centuries ago in 2014, The new ScotRail franchise holder, Abelio ScotRail, was looking to improve many services by providing more capacity and electrifying many lines. For the new trains part, they commissioned our favourite microwave company to build 70 new trains for this purpose, with the final agreement being signed in April of the next year. Construction of the units began in November 2015, with the body shells being manufactured at Hitachi's Kasado Works in Japan, before being transported and fitted out at Newton Aycliffe in England. The first units arrived with ScotRail in 2016, however they would not enter service for another two years due to several teething problems such as windows making drivers double sighted and other wee things like this. Once a successful introduction to service had been completed by 2018, displacing many of the superior Class 380s and ancient BREL multiple units, Hitachi tried to encourage the Scottish idiots to let them develop a battery electric version of the 385 to make them even worse probably. However, nothing came of those talks, finally. Today, all 70 class members are still in service, with ScotRail only, pleasing drunk Scots in service such as the North Berwick Line, the Dunbar Line, the Edinburgh Glasgow Line, amongst others. The ride is probably where this train falls down a wee bit. It suffers from the usual modern train build quality, or a lack of it. The plastic panels in the interior tend to rattle, sometimes quite violently, not creating a good atmosphere. Aside from this, it is rather similar to other ScotRail trains, with a 2 plus 2 seating arrangement, luggage spaces, sizeable overhead racks, a bog, amongst other amenities. The seats are rather good actually, especially in an age where seats on trains tend to be made out of tungsten, these seats are comfortable and tolerable on long journeys. The Class 385 does not have a unique design. The body like other Hitachi trains is double skinned aluminium, making it light and sturdy. The lead vehicles are just over 23.5 metres long and the trailers are 23 metres long, making them around the same length as Mark III coaches. Hitachi's own IGBT traction system, combined with the traction motors, is able to output 335 horsepower per motor. With there being 6 on the 385-0, this creates an output of 2,010 horsepower, and with there being 8 on the 385-1, this creates a horsepower of 2,680. This gives the units a very good acceleration and high top speed of 100 miles per hour, or 160 kilometers per hour for you funny Europeans. The class has two variants, like the 380. The 385-0 has only three coaches and 206 seats, whilst the 385-1 has four coaches and 273 seats for higher density commuter workings. In conclusion then, the Class 385 trains have definitely made an improvement to services by replacing older trains such as the Class 314 and displacing other trains such as the 158s and 170s on the aforementioned routes. In comparison to Hitachi's other failures, the 385 is definitely the best by far due to its superior interior to uh, the AT300s. And there you go, that's a review of the Class 385s. If you have any other suggestions for other vehicles to review in this series, do leave them down below. I do look at the comments for like the two of you that do actually comment. 
All sources will be linked below. Thank you comrades for watching. I'll probably see you all next week in, in another instalment of TS. See ya. Damn it, I can't go to the pub. It's closed today. Oh well. Damn it, Tesco's it is. <laughs>